Good evening and welcome to Compline on this Wednesday evening. Let's just have a moment of quiet as we begin. Calm me, O oh Lord, as you still the storm. Still me, O oh Lord. Keep me from harm. Let the tumult within me cease. Enfold me, Lord, in your peace. Father, bless the work that is done and the work that is to be. Father, bless the servant that I am and the servant that I will be. Thou Lord and God of power, shield and sustain me this night. I will lie down this night with God and God will lie down with me. I will lie down this night with Christ and Christ will lie down with me. I will lie down this night with the Spirit and the Spirit will lie down with me. God and Christ and the Spirit be lying down with me. Sorry about the wobbles. We're going to look at um, some scripture from Peter's perspective this evening. And I'm going to read you some verses from Acts chapter 10. In Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion of the Italian cohort, as it was called. He was a devout man who feared God. With all his household, he gave alms generously to the people and prayed constantly to God. One afternoon, about three o'clock, he had a vision in which he clearly saw an angel of God coming in and saying to him, Cornelius, he stared at him with terror and said, what is it, Lord? He answered, your prayers and your arms have ascended as a memorial before God. Now send a man to Joppa for a certain Simon, who was called, who is called Peter. He is lodging with Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. About noon the next day, Peter went up to the roof to pray. He became hungry and wanted something to eat. And while, he was being, while it was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw the heaven opened and something like a large sheet coming down, being lowered to the ground by its four corners. In it were all kinds of four-footed creatures and reptiles and birds of the air. Then he heard a voice saying, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, by no means, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is profane or unclean. The voice said to him again a second time, what God has made clean, you must not call profane. This happened three times and the thing was suddenly taken up to heaven. Now, while Peter was greatly puzzled about what to make of the vision that he'd seen, Suddenly, the men sent by Cornelius appeared. They were asking for Simon's house and they were standing by the gate. They called out to ask whether Simon, who was called Peter, was staying there. While Peter was still thinking about the vision, the spirit said to him, Look, three men are searching for you. About Three men are searching for you. Now get up, go down and go with them without hesitation, for I have sent them. So Peter invited them in and gave them lodging. The following day they came to Caesarea. Cornelius was expecting them and had called together his relatives and close friends. On Peter's arrival, Cornelius met him and falling at his feet, worshipped him. But Peter made him get up and said, stand up, I, I'm only a mortal. And as he talked with him, he went in and found that many had assembled. And he said to them, you yourselves know that it is unlawful for a Jew to associate or to visit a Gentile. But God has shown me that I should not call anyone 
profane or unclean. I truly understand that God shows no partiality. In every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. While Peter was speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on even the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for baptising these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptised in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited them to stay for several days. You must be joking, Lord. That's what I told him, and I was deadly serious. For the very idea of eating such unclean Gentile food filled me with revulsion, my stomach heaving at the prospect. Even if I'd been starving, I wouldn't have touched it, no way. Yet this voice went on and on, ringing in my ears. Get up, Peter, kill and eat. And each time afterwards, despite my protestations, the same message, what God has made clean, you must not call profane. I was thankful to wake up and find that it was all a dream. Yet my relief was short-lived for the picture still haunted me, hovering in my mind's eye, and try as I might, I couldn't remove it. I was baffled, I was mystified, and a touch ashamed at even entertaining such thoughts. For they went against everything I believed, everything I'd been taught from my mother's arms. But there was no time for brooding for suddenly these strange people appeared calling my name and to their voices added another, that voice of my dream. Get up, go down, go with them. So I went and found that God had gone before me, a man waiting there expectantly, a Roman centurion, and all at once it made sense. The mystery resolved. He was a Gentile, you see, according to our law, unclean, impure. Someone I was bound as a Jew to refuse. And just a day earlier, I'd have done just that. The alternative was unthinkable. Only that was yesterday. And this is today. God has shown me different. His love. Open to any, whatever their culture, colour or creed. I left him rejoicing, singing God's praises and filled with the Holy Spirit. That man I'd have passed by without a thought, impervious to his pleas. But while I saw the barriers which kept us apart, God, through his love, brought us together. And at last, for the first time in my life, I saw not the outside, but the person within, the life beneath, the child of God for whom Christ died, as he died for you and me and for everyone. Let's turn to prayer this evening. Heavenly Father, we've heard words about the divide being obliterated. Father, we pray that for our world. There are so many divisions in this world. Religion, money, power, speech.
division between the sexes, between the ages. Between those who have too much and those who have nothing. And yet in your eyes, Father, we are the same. Put bluntly, we are all miserable sinners in need of salvation. We can't be absolved of our sin by the colour of our skin or where we live or how we speak or how many times we go to church or what schools we go to or how much we get paid or the car we drive. We can only be absolved of our sin by accepting that sin and the need for forgiveness and asking you to forgive us and to take over our lives. And Father, that is a language that every person can speak. And Father, we know that once those words are said, your forgiveness and your grace and your mercy will not be withheld, regardless of who we are, what we've done, where we live and how much we earn. Father, we thank you that we are equal in your eyes. equally precious, equally loved, equally saved by the sacrifice of your son. Father, help us to work and do all that we can for a fairer world. A world where we don't have to walk in fear A world where we sometimes don't progress because of the sound of our voice. Father, when your son, your son died once for all, that's what it meant. One death, salvation available to every single person, regardless, available to all, freely offered and joyfully given. So Father, each day remind us how precious we are in your sight. Remind us how precious our neighbour is, our friends, those we love, and actually those we don't like. And Father, forgive us when we don't treat people as we should. And Father, we pray that you will send the Holy Spirit to convict us of those actions and to allow us to do better. Let's say the Lord's Prayer together this evening. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The peace of God be over me to shelter me.
under me to uphold me, about me to protect me, behind me to direct me. The peace of all peace be mine this night, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Take care, sleep well, and may God bless you richly.